Hey everyone, the name's Eric Dor, and in today's video, allow me to introduce you to the ENTP's four subtypes. I want to talk about how ENTPs can look differently under the presence of stress and anxiety. And I have found four co common variations of ENTPs. I believe that ENTPs can be divided into those that have a high intuitive development, those that have a high thinking development, those that have an unusual development of their feeling function, and those that have a high development of their sensing functions. Now, the first variation, of course, is the most normal. Uh, the ENTP has been able to balance their intuitive and thinking functions together. They are able to read connections. They are able to deconstruct the room and how the room works. They are able to figure out how things work quickly. They have this grasp for understanding pragmatically what works, what doesn't work, what solutions uh, seem to be the most efficient, what seems to be inefficient, what do I have, what are the clear facts and evidence. The ENTP is a detective based on evidence and on fact. In many ways they pursue true knowledge about how things work and what's going on in the world. ENTPs uh, are people that in many degrees, to, many ex to a high extent, uh, desire to feel that they have some degree of power and respect. And this need for respect is actually quite uh, unique to ENTPs and ENTJs and ESTPs alike. Uh, all have some desire to make to feel like they are respected for what they do, that other people admire them for what they do, that other people see them in high regard and trust them to be able to do what needs to be done. ENTPs want to have this uh, feeling that people can rely on them, that other people know what, what you can do, everyone is aware of how good you are at what you do, and everyone trusts you to be able to do it well. You have a role that tends to attract status. ENTPs tend to attract title, status, recognition, if they want it. and. Uh, this depends on, of course, how well developed you are. Because in many stereotypes, ENTPs tend to be str struggling with chronic laziness. At the same time as all of this is happening, uh, ENTPs are sometimes described as lazy. It, uh, it's, it's a difficulty for ENTPs to feel that uh, they know what is the right decision. A thinking perceiving type can keep brainstorming and uh, come up with different ways to solve a problem, but they might not know which option is the best. So ENTPs commonly get stuck juggling options and thinking about different possibilities and different ways to solve a problem, but they never do anything in practice and this can sometimes make them be characterized as lazy. Of course what they are looking for is the most optimal Situ solution in every situation. What solution takes the least amount of energy to get done? How do I do this the quickest way possible? That's the ENTP way. Finding a quick way to get a problem done, to find an efficient way to solve a problem. Now ENTPs are in many ways uh, going to, beyond this, uh, be dealing with two core issues. First, the presence of stress, when things get too much for you, and then the presence of anxiety, when you get into some form of emotional imbalance. Now, the ENTP's two common variations then, the more healthy variations, are the sidekick and the mentor. And the sidekick ENTP is vastly different from the mentor ENTP. The first and foremost, there are ENTPs that see themselves as having some degree of responsibility over other people. ENTPs that feel like they have commitments to others to fulfill, to live up to. ENTPs that feel like they uh, need to live up to and honor these obligations. And then there are ENTPs that in many ways try to run away from obligations, that uh, want other people's approval, but that don't necessarily want to work for it. ENTPs that want to have fun, ENTPs that want to entertain, and ENTPs that love how they are able to talk themselves out of any situation. Through this, ENTPs have this gift of communicating themselves if they want to, under stress, ENTPs are gifted communicators. At work and in work situations, they can somehow manage to deal themselves into any situation they want. They can get uh, other people to agree to things they, where other people go, how did I even agree to that? How did I even say that? And that's the ENTP, one of the ENTP's core gifts. 
Uh, this, of course, is what uh, can also feed into laziness and sometimes because this is the childish ENTP behavior. ENTPs uh, can sometimes uh, use this ability to avoid responsibility for things. They can uh, put it on other people, they can get other people to take up their slack wherever they are lacking, and they can use it to get other people to get their, <laughs> what they need to do, uh, what they should be doing themselves for them. Now, Beyond this, uh, other ENTPs are developed to be more about responsibility, and this, uh, these are the nerds, or the geeks. ENTPs that uh, feel a high amount of responsibility over others tend to fall more into introverted and sensing behaviors. They tend to become experts in a specific subject. They tend to uh, go deeply into something, deep into a hobby or into an interest, learning everything about it, maximizing themselves uh, and mastering everything about it, knowing as much as possible about it, uh, remembering everything about there is to know about the subject. The ENTPs can sometimes fall into this more geek-like behavior of, well, becoming kind of uh, um, an expert on a particular subject. Now, these ENTPs uh, do this often out of the desire to use this information to help other people. So this is great if you're in uh, the situation of being some kind of uh, tech consultant. If other people are calling you asking for help with technology or how things work or other, if other people need your help learning something, ENTPs are great teachers and these ENTPs in particular are amazing teachers, great at showing other people how to do things, giving people clear instructions and things, uh, becoming amazing at uh, basically the uh, basically the teaching or instructor role. Now the problem with both of these roles, both the ISTP and the more ENFJ-like behavior, is that none of them represent what makes an ENTP truly happy. Both only represent a part of it. Now, the ENFJ represents uh, how you can have fun and how you can explore your interests without having to do any of the work regarding it. Uh, the ISTP represents how an ENTP can, uh, in many ways, uh, uh, do well at work, how they can become successful, how they can become admired for what they do. But sometimes this comes at the expense of letting yourself have fun, letting yourself explore freely, letting yourself test out new theories, letting yourself try out new things, read new connections. Uh, explore new patterns. Uh, the ISTP like ENTP has to constantly tell themselves no I don't shouldn't look at that, no I shouldn't do that, no I should focus, no I need to work on this only like this tunnel vision uh, uh, like tendency. Uh, while the ENFJ is uh, constantly going in many ways uh, oh uh, I will only do what uh, is expected of me, uh, of me. I will only do as much as necessary, but then I will spend every time else I can having fun. And uh, the expense of the ENFJ state, uh, and what's important to realize, the problem with it is, while it's fun and everything, it's not fulfilling. ENTPs in the ENFJ role might find that what they do has no meaning or that it gives them no sense of purpose or fulfillment. Uh, no matter how much they do it and engage in it, they are only having fun. They feel in many ways like they are wasting away their life, that they are throwing themselves into just enjoying the moment and having fun, but they fail to take the responsibility they feel like they should be taking, uh, pursuing the responsibility, perhaps they have some kind of position that uh, needs their attention, perhaps they have work, sometimes they have a responsibility or a title or some kind of position at a, a workplace or uh, in a project that is important and maybe sometimes they talk themselves out of doing it, maybe sometimes the ENTP has a tendency to avoid these important uh, projects, uh, projects that uh, the ENTP will find fulfilling, meaningful, positive, giving. Um, and the, beyond that, the sidekick state is in many ways a stressful state to be in, because uh, while you're chasing all these uh, different fun activities, you constantly have this looming sense of feeling of, oh, I should be doing something else. Oh, I should be doing something important. Oh, I should be working harder at something. You, uh, if you don't respond to that sense of stress, uh, you 
are escaping from it. So that's important to note this, that uh, uh, you want to do this, you have a nagging feeling about it, and that nagging feeling is a source of unhealthy repressed stress. Beyond that, the ISTP variation of the ENTP has another problem, and that is repressed anxiety. Perhaps the ENTP in this state is feeling chronically bored and under-motivated by what they do. Perhaps they feel like they are um, keeping themselves from exploring their passion or their hobby. And uh, pr uh, when you have that feeling that, oh, I'm not doing what I want with my life, that can create a tremendous amount of anxiety and worry in you. It can uh, also... Uh, get you to wonder what you're doing, what the point is, what, what's the meaning of it. So uh, these feelings are important. These are universal feelings. We can all, regardless of our personality types, feel sometimes caught up in these anxiety, child, uh, mentor, stress loops. And it's important to remember that while these... Uh, while these states are universal, that everyone can drift into them, how they are for you is unique. What you think is, uh, what is childish behavior for an ENTP is healthy behavior for an ENFJ. What is, uh, in many ways, uh, responsible or parent or <laughs> mentor-like behavior for an ENTP is healthy for an ISTP. So often... Uh, it's that you're engaging in your wrong interest. You're doing things that are outside of your core interest, your core drive, and your core inherent sense of what's meaningful. So the key lesson is getting back in touch with all of it. Finally, the fourth subtype worth mentioning is the ISFJ subtype, because this is the ENTP at their worst. When an ENTP is completely taken over by anxiety and stress, and when they are acting purely uh, not because they think something is good, right, meaningful, interesting, stimulating, but purely out of a desire to relieve stress and anxiety, that's when ENTPs can come off as ISFJs. And in some ways you could describe them as the, you know, the beauty queens at school that are a little condescending and that are sometimes a little uh, the popular person, you know, they get addicted to popularity and to being liked by everyone and to having social control at all times. They become uh, focused on, in many ways, how they look and judging other people by how other people look. They become a little more shallow in a degree. And uh, the uh, the ISFJ represents an ENTP's repressed anxieties and stressors. So this can actually, this is not something we engage in because we like it or because we want to, but we engage in it because we just get so stressed out and so anxious and our situation at, uh, in school or in, at home is not uh, really bearable right now. That can cause people to start acting out and acting out of their normal interests at, for that matter. Hopefully... Learning about these subtypes, you can learn about how you can become a healthy, a more healthy ENTP, and how you can come better in touch with flow. And uh, some final warnings I would put out is uh, the ESFP state puts an ENTP into autopilot. So be wary of that. Be wary of the numbness of ES and feeling and perceiving. Uh, it gives you no sense of meaning. It gives you no sense of gratification. It gives you no sense of interest. It just nulls you. It dumps your mind in a way. And uh, finally, the presence of INTJs, the muse archetype for an ENTP, uh, is the, it provides a sense of challenge, it provides a sense of anxiety and worry and some form of stress, but it also boosts your interest, your motivation, and it gives you stimulation. So often on having an INTJ friend or having an environment that can provide you with some kind of INTJ-like stimulus that can uh, also be a way to challenge yourself as an ENTP to get out of your comfort zone and your normal habits, but in a way that puts you in a state of an even higher amount of flow or inspiration than average. So that's all for now. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and if you did, leave a like, share, and subscribe. And as always, I hope to see you guys in the next video.